the following spring stepped out on my own, trusting that God would lead the rest of the way, not knowing how the next bill would get paid or um, where my groceries would be coming from. And I look back and, and wonder how I made it, if not for the love of the Lord and for His grace. Hello there. Welcome to Treasures and Truth with Tope. I am so excited to have you here. I'm your host, Dr. Tope Kiku. Everyone wants to feel happy, but it's easy to lose hope and feel defeated in a chaotic world that's so full of problems. This podcast is all about helping you discover the hidden treasures in your trials so you can renew your confidence and live in freedom. If you're going through a difficult season right now and need encouragement, you'll find support here. Uh, But before we begin, I'd like to ask you a favor. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, leave a rating and a review to help spread the word. Um, Without much ado, uh, with me on the show today is a special guest who has practiced immigration law for over 25 years in the state of Florida. She has a master's degree in Latin American studies and political science. She has an attractive resume, uh, which includes an extensive experience in immigration law, family, estate planning, probate law, and conflict resolution. She is truly multilingual. In addition to English, she's fluent in Spanish, Brazilian, Portuguese, and French. She's also widely traveled and is a fierce advocate for cultural awareness and inclusion. Um, She's also passionate about issues related to children, domestic abuse survivors, the disabled, immigrants, and civil rights. Um, And on top of all of that, she is a mom of two wonderful children, and a warrior, princess, and daughter of the Most High God. Uh, She's passionate about educating and empowering people to improve their lives. So please join me in welcoming Miss Nadine Brown to the show. Welcome, Nadine. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on Treasures and Truth Podcast. It is a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So Nadine, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm an immigrant from Jamaica, which is a Caribbean island, um, English speaking. And my family migrated to the U.S. when I was a child. And I grew up in South Florida and uh, became an attorney um, uh, many years ago. Uh, 25 years I've been practicing and enjoy the practice of law. It does have its downsides, but um, it is what I do and it's what I love doing. And I think it's a gift uh, that I have that really... God has ordered my steps in in every aspect of where I am and how I got to be here. Oh, good. Thank you for that introduction. So let me follow up with that. You mentioned God. What part does faith play in your life? Uh, Faith is the primary driver. Um, You know, the Bible says that seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. And I put God first place in all things. And I know that um, he is the reason why I was here. While many of my colleagues struggled uh, through the bar exam, which is very challenging and daunting, Mm -hmm. I was sitting in the parking lot of my car (laughs) repeating the 23rd Psalms. And on my first try, I passed the bar. Was it intimidating? Was I afraid? Yes. But I knew that God had me and um, steered me through that process. So I give him the glory and know that faith for that examination and for everything that came after is what has sustained me through this journey. Wow. So you were sitting that uh, in the parking lot, uh, right? When to write your bar exam, and you were linking into God, asking for His help, uh, depending on Him through the twenty third Psalm. 
Wow. Yes. Yes, I was because it's a, it's an overwhelming experience. Six hours, two, two days worth of exam, six hours each day. And I know some people did not pass. Some people didn't make it through the exam because they had panic attacks, <clears throat> but I was in my car just reciting the Psalms and listening to praise and worship. And I think praising him first to invite the spirit in and, and also giving him the glory and letting him order your steps and how I responded on each test question is what got me through. And, and I could tell you that I'm an intelligent person, but um, he provides wisdom where I would fail. Wow, Nadine, that is profound. I want you to be my lawyer. Uh, <laughs> if you have a lawyer who loves the Lord and is passionate about seeking him first, I mean, I would love to have that. I would love to have you on my side, right? A lawyer like yes. that on my side. So, yeah, that's so encouraging. Um, so, you've been practicing for 25 years. Um, I know you've got a lot of stories. And so, I'm just going to leave it open for you to share uh, with our listeners. So, yes, it's been a journey. I started out uh, in Daytona Beach doing public interest law, working consumer services, uh, uh, you know, debt defense um, and housing, people who were being evicted, um, migrated from Daytona to Orlando, which is a, a greater cultural hub and had more things going on. And my best friend was living here. So uh, it was a great move for me um, and started out in Orlando at Catholic Charities. And what I learned on that journey um, from a kind of ecumenical or or um, biblical perspective is, you know, I was kind of a, a starving attorney, if you could believe it. Um, public interest work is not the the most um, uh, profitable, especially mm -hmm. when you're you're trying to help the poor. You do a lot of pro bono, mm -hmm. and that is enjoying. But when you've got student loans um, and other financial challenges, it, it becomes difficult. A single woman in a big metropolitan area with a student loan bill coming due, and and that's very prominent in the news now. Um, it hinders, or it can create uh, problems for the quality of life that you would like. So. Um, I decided to leave my job at Catholic Charities, um, which was an incredible experience. It was where I learned immigration law because I had not uh, learned it in school. And, and other than my own experience as an immigrant, um, it was challenging at first, uh, but I learned a lot in the three years that I was there. Um, but I also learned that um, poverty is not a lifestyle that is um, conducive to you know, paying your bills. And also, I don't think it's God's best for us because he wants us to have an abundant life. That is why Jesus came and redeemed us. Um, so that the sacrifice that he paid, we could reap the rewards of. So that was kind of the first thing for me was some people, you know, say, don't be greedy. And that is true because the, uh, the, the Bible verse that, um, the love of money is the root of all evil. I truly believe that. And if you believe the word, then you know that it is God inspired and, mm -hmm. and not trying to be greedy, but you have to pay your bills. And that is the biggest challenge is how you balance um, your needs with um, your calling. So mm -hmm. I feel that my calling is to serve and to help people and to do that as an attorney advocating for them. Um, but I also have the need to pay my bills and my student loans, which is a financial obligation. So um, those kind of two motivating factors need to pay my bill and also honor God in doing that. Um, I took in a tremendous leap of faith and that's kind of, I believe where my journey began, although there were stories previous to uh, it was taking an enormous leap of faith because what I did, I think, I think for me is incredible. And for anybody else in your listening audience is also inspiration. Um, everybody's aware globally of September 11th, 2001. And that was yes. when the World Trade Center um, event occurred and many people lost their lives. And uh, within, I'd say, six months of that event, it was almost kind of what we're experiencing now globally with um, the economy. Mm -hmm. And so it was not probably the right time in the natural to go out on your own, but I left my job at Catholic Charities where I had a steady paycheck. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I was going to 
Um, one, trust God and two, trust my abilities and the abilities that he gave me and step out on my own and become a soul practitioner. Um, it was extremely scary because there are many attorneys competing for clients in the metropolitan Orlando area. Um, I'm a woman of color um, and I had $2,000 in the bank um, and a house that I had purchased prior to September 11th, 2001 in February. And then, you know, the following spring stepped out on my own, trusting that God would lead the rest of the way, not knowing, you know, where the next bill, how the next bill would get paid or um, where my groceries would be coming from. And I look back and, and wonder how I made it, if not for the love of the Lord and for his grace. Um, that allowed me to get client after client and what you have to do to, you know, in the natural hustle, it's like you <laughs> go see clients, you get your name out there, you go on talks, um, you put flyers, you do what is required because the two things I don't do is hungry and homeless. And I know that um, he will provide for me yes, uh, so that I will not beg, beg bread. Um, and he did that. And, you know, even my own efforts, I think he superseded all of that. You know, he can do exceedingly abundantly above whatever I could think, do or ask. And my efforts are but so much, but he provided for me. He is Jaira. And the clients came and they came and they kept coming and they are still coming. And, wow. you know, 22 years into private solo practice without an associate. Um, and without real advertising, word of mouth primarily, I think it is, but the great in, indescribable, that's um, incredible. incomparable grace of God. That's incredible. That's really incredible. Wow. What a journey. So yeah. it's been a journey of, uh, it's been a journey of faith, of yes. depending on God, um, partner, co you dis what you describe is co-partnering with God yes. in this effort. You've given me the skills and talents, Lord. I'm going to take those skills and talent and I'm going to trust you and step out in faith. So working at the Catholic um, uh, charities was the beginning of that journey. And you decided to step out on a leap of faith. Wow. Yes. And God so, has steadily provided for 25 years. Wow. Yes. So... You know, I would encourage anyone who has a business idea, any business plan, that the best partner that you can have is Jehovah Jireh. And, you know, the word says that um, a man will not succeed unless he sits down and makes a plan, but understanding the path that God has for him, whether it's, you know, reconstructing the wall um, in Jerusalem or, you know, creating your own business, you can put together a business plan. You can have an accountant, you can even have an attorney, but you have to have faith, not only in your own abilities, but that God will provide a way for you if you allow him to lead you. Um, and he has provided also wisdom and discernment because uh, that other component of faith is knowing who to accept as a client and who not to accept because a part of business is, are we a good fit? Because if the enemy's on the loose looking whom he can devour, um, trying to steal, kill and destroy, you mm -hmm. know, that sometimes it'll come in many forms. Um, and that may be in, in the form of a client. So it's discerning through wisdom, which mm -hmm. cases to take, which cases not to take Because even though, you, you know, you may feel hunger driving your desire to take any and everything which some of my colleagues do it may end in disaster so over the course of the 25 years it's refining you know who i am as a person and the clients i want to help the cases that i will uh, pursue versus when i i hear the holy spirit um whether it's through my gut or still a small voice saying you know maybe this is not the one past pass it up because you don't have to help everyone that comes your way. You want to be a good Samaritan and be charitable. Um, and that's what I learned at Catholic Charities. But I also learned in my journey, discernment. Uh, and, you know, as the book of James will talk about, um, he who lacks wisdom, you only need to ask it because again, that abundant um, 
the, the abundance, abundance of God. Of life, yeah. Yes, he will provide. And so it's discerning which clients to take, which clients not to take. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people have had negative experiences. I've had very few conflicts with my clients, which is, you know, a driver also of complaints or um, dissatisfaction. And I think as a professional, um, you always want to be in good stead with your client base because that's also your referral source. Mm-hmm. And so my philosophy and mission and motto um, is that not everybody's going to be your friend, but you want to treat them like family. Mm-hmm. So that is critical and that's important and essential for what I do because that's also a referral source is if I did good work for you, mm-hmm. you refer your friends, your family, people in your mm-hmm. sphere of influence um, or those who uh, you feel could use the services that I have to provide. And that's what has kept me going. And I think is the foundation of any good um, business um, now and in the future. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I love, love, love what you just shared with us. Um, you said the best the best partner you can have is Jehovah Jireh, is God the best business partner you can have. And so you just gave us the secret to your success uh, as an attorney for the last 25 years is partnering with God, listening to him, allowing him to guide you in every decision, every step of the way, whether it's, uh, you know, which clients to take, uh, which direction to go. Wow, that's that's amazing. That's really amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I also would like to ask, I know in 25 years, um, have you had any any challenges that, and how did you overcome them? So in the 25 years, um, yes, I've had challenges. You know, I've been incredibly successful in my professional life. And I would say my personal life has been challenged in my two verses which apply both professionally and personally is can two walk together unless they're agreed and talks about, you know, partnering with God primarily. Mm -hmm. Um, But also in the 25 years I got married and I also got divorced. So for, for, you know, life happens while you're, you're doing what you think you're called to do. And um, I had prayed and uh, I thought it was answer to prayer because um, again, discernment and trying to see what God is wants for you and, you know, which people you would be a good fit. Um, And the husband that I chose um, did not last the duration of the 25 years that um, I had been practicing and, and I had prayed and I knew that he was a Christian, at least he told me thus. And, uh, you know, sometimes people's behaviors uh, indicate one thing, but over time um, it, it did not meet up to those requirements. So I'm a divorced mother of two, um, still going strong and um, still walking with the Lord. Uh, know that uh, God's best is for us if you're inclined to be married, because marriage is honorable and the Bible states that. Um, but can two walk together unless they're agreed? And I counsel a lot of people because I also am a divorce attorney besides immigration practice that I have. Um, and it is very challenging and it was challenging for me to make a decision to end my relationship. Uh, a lot of people struggle as I did um, with being a Christian and what God's best is for you and the vows that you take and the the wisdom that I got in that process. It was a marriage of about 70 years, but I know this person um, five years prior. So uh, it was roughly about 11, 12 years that we had been together. Um, but, you know, some people aren't always who they say they are. Um, or they're tested and challenged in different ways. And you can't honestly n- always know the heart of someone, only God does. Yes. Um, so actions will prove um, through the tests and the challenges that you received, whether or not it's a safe um, environment for you, whether that, and that's emotional as well as physical and financial. Um, so a lot of the counsel that I give to my clients is not advocating for divorce because that's not always God's best and it's not always appropriate in every situation, but only you can make the final decision as when to sever. Uh, And I believe that the word is also about spiritual death, not just physical death. So a lot of people get challenged or hung up with, 
until death do us parts means the physical death. And so I will hang in there um, until, you know, I get the last rites and they're going to put me in the grave physically. And I believe through what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me and to my own journey, that sometimes a spiritual death is what severs the relationship. Um, and, you know, God will close doors, which no man can open. And sometimes it's not for you to keep you know, going back to a situation that is harmful emotionally, physically, or financially. Um, and we all, you know, have different challenges and you know what your limits are. Uh, for me, it's, you know, trying to maintain my practice in my life. And when my children's lives become endangered or my own, then you know that you have to make some hard cho choices. Um, but always seeking the Lord in prayer, seeking his wisdom, see, seeking discernment, um, not wishing or hurting anyone else, but for your own preservation, mm -hmm. sometimes you need to move forward and to make the difficult decision and know that if we serve a God that is full of grace and that the only sin is unbelief and not yeah. recognizing the finished work at the cross, then he will forgive you and you need to forgive yourself for the severance of relationship. Um, so, and you know what's in your heart and your intent. So my best advice and the challenge that I had experienced is knowing when to sever um, either a destructive relationship or an unhealthy relationship. Um, and, you know, there are varying standards based on the individual. You best know who you are. My motto is always that Marriage is a journey of self-discovery because sometimes you will be tested in ways that you had never imagined. Mm -hmm. um, but also know that you should never be pushed to lose your, your hope or your salvation. And that's an individual journey as well. Mm -hmm. um, so for those, and for, for me, a dividing line was um, knowing that you will suffer the consequences of the choices that somebody else makes. So when two of you are, are yoked together um, and it's good, um, yeah. but when it's bad and it's really bad and mm -hmm. you know that you're going to suffer um, the negative, the severely negative consequences that somebody else makes, then that's also a point where you have to decide, is this something that God is going to pull you through? Or is he saying you need to see all the red flags, you need to wake up? Because besides Amos 3.3 that says, can two walk together unless they're agreed? Mm -hmm. It is 2 Timothy 1.7, which says that God did not give us a spirit of spirit fear, of fear. Mm -hmm. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And don't lose your mind, essentially, is what that verse says. So, yeah. you know, walk in wisdom, one, know mm -hmm. that you should not be fearful. Um, and a lot of people are afraid. You know, and so they stay in a relationship that is destructive or unhealthy, um, both mentally, physically, or financially, or in other ways, or for their children. And you have to kind of use discernment, use wisdom, use God's power and grace to make hard choices and to know that um, he will never leave you nor forsake you or see, see you begging bread. And there were days, even as an attorney struggling on my own, having to make financial choices um, with a life partner that... Um, I chose, or I think God chose for me, um, that this was not going to be healthy or possible. So I needed to kind of leave that and, and continue to go. And yeah. a lot of people are fearful of, well, what's going to happen to me financially or what's going to happen to my kids. Um, but if you lean on the Lord and if you have a support system, I had no support system. Um, most of my family is in, a, in, in another city. Um, half the time people experience uh, shame or they're uh, fearful, don't want to speak to anybody or let people know their business. Um, but you know, you're not alone. You don't have to be alone. If you can't get professional counseling or you don't have friends or family members to support you and to guide you through, um, then you always seek the Lord. And that's yeah. the first place where I went and I have been and I have not left. And, you know, Psalm 91 is like, um, those who dwell in the secret place of the most high and, dwell there i've set up tent and shop and stakes and yeah i'm not leaving oh wow <laughs> so under uh, his wings i will be covered oh wow nadine do you just give a, a truck trove of treasures right there i mean wow um one 
you know, uh, thank you for sharing about your challenge and how you weathered it. Uh, and I, I, I can tell from listening that it was a really difficult time. Uh, and you walked us through how how you came to make the decision to leave, to move on. Um, and like you said, it's different for each one of us. It's a decision that each person has to make. And they have to lean in onto God and ask for wisdom and discernment. And I like that you were not just being emotional about it, but that you were rational about it. Okay, what's the impact on me? What's the impact on my children? And what does God have to say about this? So taking all of those into account, you came up to that decision that, okay, it's time to go. And again, it goes back to what we started with, your trust and leaning on God. And you chose again to lean on God. So that is so powerful. Um, so let me ask this. Um, in that journey, in that challenging time, what brought you joy the most? It was having um, my children. Um, and I know the word says that they're a great gift from the Lord, their great heritage and the fruit of my womb shall be blessed. And they have indeed brought me joy. Um, one of my children does have special needs. And so there's a challenge there. And is it hard? Yes. Um, on a daily basis? Yes. But we laugh um, and knowing their progress in life and that they have such incredible potential and that God has purposed them for something greater than I probably could ever accomplish mm -hmm. is what brings me joy. And I was trying to express to somebody the other day of, of what soul joy means. It's not just, you know, laughter in the moment, but it's understanding that God has such a marvelous things for you in spite of what you see going on around you or you may experience in the world. So whether it was, you know, things going on at work that were stressful or my marriage falling apart, um, I knew that I had my kids and what I was doing for them is what brought me joy. Um, and what their future would hold is what also brought me joy. And also just the knowledge of God brought me joy. Um, it's, it's just, it's something that you just, it's a knowing in your spirit that he has you and that come what may, um, he will see you through. Um, and it's like, you know, every battle, every challenge, um, it is laughing through it because, you know, God's got it. I mean, the battle is his, it is not yours. And sometimes we're running around or I'm, you may get upset about a thing or a person or a circumstance. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when you look back or you look at it in the scheme of things, um, it may be hilarious because it's like, <laughs> because people do things, you know, without thinking and, and, and that whole journey and walking in forgiveness is because if they really truly understand the profound impact some of their decisions have or the circumstances, um, you know, and God is, has a sense of humor. He will rectify things. He is what I call, he is uh, Jehovah Gamala. And I had a situation this week from the hurricane where I ended up in stitches, even though it was upsetting initially. But I said, you know what? He's a God of justice. So in due course, sometimes sooner, sometimes later, he will remedy what needs to be remedied. And I take joy and comfort in that. So I'm laughing. I laugh a lot, even in, in the face of of circumstances. And some people say I should be a comedian, but it just, because if you step back and look, you know, you realize how privileged and how blessed you are in the yeah. midst of everything. And so, um, uh, just the blessing is what brings me joy. The blessing of my kids, the blessing of perspective, uh, is also what brings me incredible joy. Wow. Wow. Nadine, you are awesome. I wish our uh, listeners could see your face just glowing and just as you you are uh, smiling and laughing and sharing with uh, with me right now, um, so you just shared that even in the midst of everything um, that could be going wrong, even as 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 early as this week with the hurricane with Hurricane Ian, you even had uh, um, an encounter and you were not taken aback by that. You still found joy. You still found. Mm -hmm laughter. And I think that's the key message you're giving us is that no matter what, we can be professionals because 
we, we can be professionals, we can be moms, uh, doesn't exempt us from the trials and hardships of life. Life's going to throw curveballs, but if we anchor in the Lord, uh, he will see us through. And we can even laugh. It uh, reminds me of the, the Proverbs 31 woman. We can even laugh at you know some of the things that 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 we go through we can we can laugh we can have joy you shared about your uh, your children being bringing you joy uh in t- being intentional about just being joyful looking at circumstances from different perspectives um and looking at it from different angles and just choosing again being intentional to choose your attitude to have that attitude of joy wow Thank you Amen. so yes. much. Thank you so much. So as we are um as we are rounding up our conversation, um, what are some of what what's one thing that you would like our listeners to take away from your story? So it would be definitely to know that you have the power of God within you and that he can do exceedingly abundantly above whatever you could think, do, or ask. Seek him first. Ask, and he will give you the treasures and desires of your heart. You know, those who dwell in him and abide in him. And that's what the word says. And if you do that, um, I'm living proof of it. Um, There are so many stories I could have told why I shouldn't be here, but I am. Um, And that's a part you know, of my journey and why I consider myself a warrior because um, the weapons of our warfare and mighty in battles through the pulling down of strongholds. So Mm -hmm. um, it's not just in the, you know, physical might that makes you a warrior, Mm -hmm. but how you overcome the trials. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful um, that you've given me this opportunity, but yes, the, the message is that persevere um, you are a warrior um, just by surviving whatever trial and seeking God and knowing that the sword of the spirit will carry you through every battle that is presented. Wow. So again, Nadine, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show today and, and sharing your story with us. And I want to ask you, how can people connect with you? So I have um, a firm website, um, nadinebrownpa.com, to find out more about my skills and qualifications and my backgrounds professionally. Um, Also reaching out through email and uh, my phone. I have a Facebook page that um, I frequently um, post um, uh, information to that is helpful in in all the areas that I practice. Um, and also, you know, just life journey, um, ideas and, and, and thoughts and, uh, community information. Cause it's like, if you don't know, uh, then you really, um, are at a disadvantage. So it's, it's seek knowledge, um, seek wisdom more than knowledge. Um, and then know that, uh, you can utilize his power, um, to get you through and to make right choices so that you can live the abundant life that Christ died for us to, to receive and to experience. Thank you for that. Um, so we'll have, so people can connect with you at nadinebrownpa.com yeah. and also on social media, on Facebook, and they can also connect with you by email. Um, so, yeah. So thank you again uh, for being here on Treasures and Truth with Tokwe. I hope Nadine's story empowers you to tap into the treasures in your own trials and to lean on God. That's the takeaway message for us today. Whatever situations we find ourselves in, lean on God, trust him, ask him for wisdom. Um, I will have the show notes uh, at hiddentreasuresandriches.com. And I would again like to ask you to remember to subscribe, leave a rating, and a review to help spread the word about this podcast. So again, thank you. Uh, Remember, God has answers. God always has answers. So whether you have a relationship challenge at home, at work, or any other crisis, remember God has answers. Um, So until next time, God bless, and I look forward to seeing you again. 